is Mark Thomas. Uh, he's our urban contemporary artist for the next couple months. This is Cheryl Collins at Collins Artworks Art Center located at 18 High Street in Clinton, Massachusetts. Our phone number is 978-368-3300. We're on the web at collinsartworks.com and on Facebook. Hi, Mark. How are you? Doing good. Can you tell us about your work? How did you get into this wonderful graffiti art? We usually see graffiti on uh, trains and buildings, which it shouldn't be, but I've always admired the design work of most of these artists, and I love the way that you've taken these and put them on paper or canvas um, where it should be so everybody can enjoy it, so we can move it around and everybody can look at these and enjoy the art, and I, I just love it. And you can also do some uh, more more art that everyone's familiar with, representational work, too. You're quite a versatile artist. Um, you've even taught our classes here, which we're very proud to have you here. Uh, the top piece up here is, a, is an Australian dot painting that he took and made his own kind of style. And I'm just scanning to show everybody his pieces. These are awesome. We're going to talk about the inspiration for these in the next few minutes. Okay, Mark, uh, let's talk about your work. Can you tell me how you, why you got into urban uh, contemporary graffiti art? Uh, yes, I can. Oh, well, first off, it's starting. Um, well, the top, the top one is like how graffiti artists like will display stuff, and usually how you would see stuff on train sets and stuff like that. This, my particular style, is a wild style, which contains a lot of images in one piece that blends them all together to have one cohesive painting You're or picture. Cool. Um, and my style kind of is mostly bold and will get at you and you could always see the emotion in the art. Um, the reason why I got into graffiti art itself um, was one is because it's part one of the four elements of hip-hop and I do pretty much everything that has to do with art. I do music, I write, I break dance or and teach hip hop dance and also do regular art. So cool. it all kind of just found myself and I love music. So I wanted to show everybody what it actually would look like and my thoughts would look like if it was on paper. And the reason why I was drawn to this was like I said before, it was because it was one of the four elements of hip hop and I do everything that has to do with hip hop. Um, and I wanted to take it, um, take graffiti art out of the negative light and all the uh, notions that went along with it to try to show people that people who do do it are talented and most of the stuff you do see does take talent except for the people who don't abide by the law. Um, and I try not, I don't do any of that. I wanted to take it out of that and put it so people could see and be displayed around everywhere. Museums Wonderful. in different countries if I get that far, which I don't know if I will, but it's a shot in the dark. It's wonderful. Um, and the more people I can reach with my art is the more people I can educate on what graffiti actually is. Very cool. So do you have a poem that you've memorized that we could hear some of your hip-hop verse? Uh, no, not, not, not even a this, little. Not at this current moment. Okay, um, do you want to show any moves? Oh, no, not oh. at this kind of <laughs> Okay, uh, so I'm embarrassing you. That's okay. Um, what? That's okay. Eventually, you'll start to see more of my uh, different talents in my art as well. Um, one of my newest series is um, mainly putting most of uh, written words into graffiti art awesome. and making the concept Wonderful. around the written word. Um, Very good. Like uh, the Blue Dream one, for example. It's a concept off of a Blue Dream and it's this middle panel right here. It's a diptych, which is two paintings put together in one to make one painting. Um, so what the basis around the Blue Dream is, every it's almost like a monogrammatic painting because it only uses the concepts of blue um, in everything. So every tone that you see here has a figment of blue or blue-green 
And the reason why I used orange was because orange is the complementary color of blue and it would help it bring all the colors out on the black okay. background. Nice. Um, also, the white lines, um, white is a neutral, so anything you put it on is going to make it pop a little bit better. In graffiti, you always use white as highlights. Very and good. It's, always, it's almost like a graffiti artist's signature. It's beautiful. Um, and then I put a flower over here. So it's uh, the reason why I put all these concepts in here is because in your imagination, anything can come alive. And in a blue dream, a dream in, in itself is anything that comes out of your imagination that you truly desire. Um, my whole thing is I love art to the fullest. And the reason why this one's called Blue Dream is because it's based all on everything in it has blue in it. Um, Very good. And it also is something that when people think of Blue Dream, it can give you your own ideas what your Blue Dream is. Very cool. Um, so that's... Can you talk about the piece above it, the woman? Um, the woman up here, um, that painting was originally for um, a uh, contract that I originally got through Collins Artworks, and it w uh, it's called Rebirth, and it was supposed to go into the cancer ward, but they thought it was going to be a little too trippy uh, because of the multiple faces that are coming out at you and the different images that are turning to each other, turning into each other. Um, so I ended up having to do another one, but it's good because I really like this painting. It's a beautiful piece. Um, the thought behind it is rebirth. So everything, the reason why everything turns into one another is because everything has a symbolic connotation to it. And the rose is a symbol of rebirth itself, being reborn into the new world. Mm -hmm. um, the blue behind her, why it's kind of opaque so you can see through her, is because the blue symbolizes life, which life is water, and that's what the blue symbolizes is water underneath her, which makes life. So it's almost like a reflection that she's sitting on top of. Um, and also, it's um, all the faces display the cycle of life, and it's almost like you see it in a wall, uh, Where's Waldo painting, and like if you ever were little and you've seen Where's Waldo's book, if you constantly look at it, you will constantly find something new every time you look. And that's kind of like what I was going for with this painting because of the name. Um, and that's pretty much about that painting. And how about these two? These are more representational pieces. I know you put them in uh -huh. to show people that you you can paint more representational, but these are very imaginative pieces as well. Can you talk about the beach one? Uh, yes, I, um, this actual painting was actually done when I was in high school. Um, this painting is called Raging Night, and it's because of the waves are so, uh, they're basically vibrant and they are very aggressive hitting the, the shoreline. And I just mm. wanted, I liked like a beach type of setting and I always liked midnight pictures of beaches so I figured I would try to make my own type of version of a midnight mm -hmm. type of look with a little bit of an edge. Yeah, I love it. Um, this one is actually a mixed media painting. It's watercolor and acrylic um, paint. That's what I did this um, on a watercolor paper framed. So that's The Raging Night. This one over here is called um, Apple's Picnic, and um, these are actually, this is actually a drawing with uh, colored um, pastels, um, oil pastels actually, um, and it's of candy apples on a picnic table, mm. um, which everybody loves Yummy. sweets, so, <laughs> and everybody loves a picnic, so I wanted it. Um, take that idea and basically encompass it into this piece. Very cool. So I'm going to move us over to the other side so I can we can talk about the other pieces in the room. I'm panning. Everyone can see Cone's artworks and our many wonderful paintings and artists here. And we have art supplies. And we sell lots of canvas, and we have art classes, and we do G-clay printing. It's over there in the other room, and we do framing. So let's get back to Mark's interview. Right. Do you want to talk about the one that's over the window there? Um, 
um, Australian dog painting that you did and made your own? Right. That painting's actually um, an Aboriginal dot painting, which when me and uh, Miss Collins were teaching a class to the children on different um, uh, cultures around the world, we came across Aboriginal ab 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 Aborigine dot paintings, which um, all tell a story. Um, and in mine, it tells a story about two fishes going in a circle of life. Therefore, one is yin and one is yang. And mm -hmm. so all the dots that are going around them is the constant energy that's giving off by those Very two Very cool, fishes. Mark. You, you uh, constantly blow me away. <laughs> um, this painting right here, mm -hmm. it shows my... All these paintings on this wall shows uh, different aspects of my po um, portrait style. I like to do a lot of uh, boldness, and I always want to make sure I have a statement to say, and the picture says a statement. Um, this actual picture is done in um, uh, the ink and brush with the Japanese brush, and um, it's all it takes in strokes, so I could not mess up. Very cool. <laughs> um, this one is actually a picture of a hip-hop artist. Uh, which his name is Busta Rhymes. I don't know if anybody knows yes, who that is. Yes, I do. Um, and this was actually on one of the covers of one of his albums a long time ago. And Very so I cool. Your drawing? To, huh? Yeah, this this is my drawing of... Um, it's in charcoal. and uh, char Yeah, it's in charcoal. <laughs> and Very good. white Conti Creon. Is that a self-portrait next to you? No, this isn't a self-portrait. This is actually most deaf. Oh. He's another hip-hop artist because okay. these, all these paintings, uh, all these drawings and paintings together um, were part of my hip-hop series that I did for my final piece at school for my associate's oh. degree um, in art at Mount Wachusett Community College. Very cool. And the last piece is very interesting, the one um, on the bottom. This one is actually because... I wanted to be an animator and I love cartoons. Is one of my um, favorite cartoon characters named Mugen, which is a samurai. And a lot of his um, aspects of his movement reminds me of dancing. So I put him in a breakdancing pose. Very cool. Um, that he's actually doing what in breakdancing we call the move 1990, which is spinning on your hands. Um, and this shows all the movement from start to finish of him doing it. And Very in the nice. middle is him doing the actual cool. action. I really want to see you do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the, okay. these are all the pieces. And these are for sale if anyone's interested. And um, Mark is also, tell me, you, you also work at Hannaford's? Yes, I work at Hannaford's Supermarkets. Um, and, and you're in college right now yeah, at Worcester at, State? Yes, I am. I'm currently doing studying psychology to get a bachelor's degree in psychology. I'm suppo supposed to graduate in 2013, which is next year. Very so, cool. Um, yeah. Exciting. Yeah. Well, thank you, Mark, very much. And uh, his reception is June, June 19th, June 19th mm -hmm. at 6.30? 6.30. 6.30. Or 6. Be That's right. You get to meet the artist and have him talk more about his work. And we'll have a great time. We'll have wine here that we give for free, and there'll be some um, some light food. So um, come on over. You'll have a great time meeting people and seeing what we're all about. And uh, Mark will be here, which is the best part of the whole thing. Thank you so much uh, for your interview and for being part of what we're doing. You're welcome, and I appreciate it. You're welcome, too.